Pretty cool. And so let's uh, take a look at the dendrochronologist. There's a word. This guy is a dendrochronologist. He's going to explain to us how he uses tree rings to study climate. So let's hear from uh, um, this professor. My name is Peter Brown. I'm a dendrochronologist. Dendro meaning tree, and ology, of course, is the study of. Chrono is time, so we're looking at time from trees, and we look at tree rings. Trees such as ponderosa pine, like this one growing up here on Horsetooth Ridge above Fort Collins, they only grow part of the year. They only grow in the summer season, and then they overwinter, and then the next year they grow again. So they put one, one ring every year, uh, and by looking at the rings, the, the variations in the widths of the rings, uh, for one thing we can count the age of the tree by how many rings are formed on the tree, but also we can look at things like the climate that the trees are growing under. You don't have to cut the tree down, we can actually use what's called an increment borer to sample the, the, uh, the ring patterns on these trees and find out how old the tree is and look at the climate and the other factors. It consists of three different parts, the borer itself, the handle, which fits into the, hand, into the borer, and then what's called the spoon or extractor. And I'll show you how this works in a minute. But essentially what we do is we just go up to the side of the tree and we start boring the tree. Now the borer itself is hollow. There's a very sharp cutting tip on there, so it's cutting the wood as it goes in. There's some threads, just like on a screw, so as we turn the bore, it's turning itself into the tree and cutting the, the core at the same time. We have to start with living trees because every year the trees are putting on a new ring of growth. So this year, uh, right now, the last ring on this tree is going to be 2009. If we came back at the same time next year, the last ring would be 2010. But what we do is we build up a library of these rings. Then we can go to neat things like these, this log that you see down here. Um, and then we can find the ring pattern in that log, find where it matches the living tree chronology, and then we can extend our records back further in time. And once we think that we're about into the center of the tree, this isn't a very big tree, this is where the spoon comes into play. So we take the spoon, the core is still attached to the inside of the tree at this point. So all we have to do is uh, there's little uh, gripper teeth on the, the spoon, so we can slide this in, jam against the core, that locks it in place, and now we can back the bore off a turn, that'll break the core free, so now we can pull out the core. We'll let this dry for uh, about a week or so, and then we'll mount it to a little wooden core mount, and at that point then we can put a surface on the, on the core, and we can really, then we'll put it under a microscope and we can really study the ring patterns in there. Uh, we can look at the seasonal variation in climate, we can look at the seasonal variation in growth of the tree, we can look at things like um, how uh, fire has affected the tree, how bark beetles have affected the trees over time. And then the last step is just to pull the borer out. So now we've got our core from this tree and others in the site and we're going to head back to the lab. Alright, here we are back in the lab. And now what's, uh, what I've done is uh, the cores now have been mounted into a, just a wooden core mount. This just gives the core a little bit of uh, structural integrity and strength and also some place to write sample IDs and things like that on it. And then we've taken that and just put it on a belt sander and put a little surface on it. So now you can see the rings very clearly in this. Uh, you'll notice, again, there's a lot of variation in the rings. Uh, let me show you this uh, ponderosa pine. Similar to the ponderosa pine we just cored up on the hill, uh, notice these three dots right there. That's actually 1900. 1900 was a very dry year in the southwest and, and here in the central Rockies. And then there's 1902 and 04. Uh, 1902 and 04 were actually the driest years in the instrumental record, the weather records that we have uh, prior to 2002. Um, if you remember, 2002 was a big drought year around the front range. There was also a big fire year on the Front Range. Uh, there was, a, um, of course, the Hayman Fire that burned 160,000 acres down on the South Platte River. Essentially, we've got weather records going back to around 1900 here on the Front Range. Well, obviously, we've got trees that go back a lot farther. So what we do is we look at the seasonal patterns of rainfall in the case of, of these drier, lower elevation trees, such as ponderosa pine, we match those up with the weather records that we have that only go back about 100 years or so. 
and then the trees go back several hundred years. Well, what we can do is we can take the relationship that we see in the growth of the trees in the re rainfall records, uh, in the weather records that we've got, and then we can use that relationship to reconstruct or re uh, to, to see what climate was like in the past based upon the tree rings. We can do that not only with the rainfall, but the other thing that we can do is also reconstruct temperature, which is very important in uh, understanding where climate is today and where it may be going in the future. Uh, again, the issue, the problem we've got with our weather records is we only have weather for about 100 years. And that's not really long enough to capture the full range of natural variability that may be out there. So what we can do again is turn to our trees. Uh, in this case, this is an Engelmann spruce that was growing up at tree line. Uh, at tree line sites, the trees are responding much more to temperature. Uh, the warmer the growing season, the more time they have to put on the ring. Uh, so what we can do is now we've still got old age trees from up there. We can uh, find the relationship between temperature during the weather we've got over the past hundred years. Uh, use that relationship then to reconstruct uh, uh, temperature going back in some cases several hundred years, but even uh, the longest records that we've got from up the tree line go back to even several thousand years. One of the longest chronologies in the world is about 12,000 years long, uh, bristlecone pine growing from the White Mountains in California, just right on the California Nevada border. So we can look at things like, uh, for example, the medieval warm period, which has been cited as a, a potentially an analog or similar situation to what we're going into today. And we can see, yes, it, it was as warm during the medieval warm period, or it's not. Uh, there's some controversy about that, and, and people are, are very much studying that issue at this, at, right now. Uh, but basically, we have the triggering records that allow us to do that, to go back that far. Well, he explained it much better than I ever could because, of course, like he's the real deal. He spends his life doing this. I just get to learn about this as I teach it to you. All right, the second thing, um, the second um, proxy is called ice cores. Now, ice cores are pretty cool. Basically, they drill a hole in ice and then they collect it. You can see here on the picture over here on the side that they've got an ice core. They basically drilled a piece of ice um, up in some glacier. And here's the kind of the deal. Glaciers have been around for a long, long time. Because in a glacier, basically it snows and it's going to be cold places up either on the tops of mountains or possibly, um, or certainly up in the higher latitudes, you know, North Pole, South Pole thing. And each year, the glacier, in theory, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And what happens is, is the ice at the bottom is very, very old and the ice at the top would be young. And so they actually have layers of, of rock. So if I take a core of this out and I extract it and I get this right here, this ice core, I can study this ice core and when I study it, I can figure out what the climate is like. Now the, the way you can do that is you see in the core, um, gases are trapped. And you can study those gases. You would melt this and study the gases. So you'd like to study this little sliver of it. And then you would um, be able to determine what the ancient atmosphere of the world was like. This method is like the one that goes back the furthest. It's 400,000 years good. That basically means when they take these ice core samples, I think a lot of them are like in Greenland and places like that. When they, when they do this, they get um, four, this, you know, this is like 400,000 years ago, and we can see what the climate was like. And here, this top part is the present today, you know. So they can study these and say, well, what was it like? Now, how, how do they do that?